G'day guys. Today we're going to write a chain return to libc exploit against the dev text package which has a buffer classic stack buffer overflow. Uh, we've done the dev text package a few times before using different types of exploits but today we're chaining our return to libc. So effectively we're combining uh, multiple library calls whereas the traditional return to libc is just one library call. Let's just make sure our home is set correctly. Uh, let's install the package that we're going to exploit. Dab text. Let's modify the make file. So that it's 32 bit. It has no stack canaries. It will also make it no pi. Let's make that. Uh, what would be the old spelling mistake? Let's make that again. Check that our program still works. It does. Now let's look at our buffer overflow. I've shown this a few times before. Um, we've been exploiting this program quite regularly. And if we go to here, we see on this particular line, we have a buffer overflow. It's copying a environment variable into the home buffer, which is of length 80, and there's no length validation. So let's check that we can trigger this bug. So this is what home looks like now. Let's run our program and we have a seg vault. Let's run it in GDB and we see that the program counter or instruction pointer is all A's which we control. To find the length of the buffer, let's use another tool. Pattern create of length 2000. Takes a few seconds to run, but not too long. This creates a cyclic pattern. Let's run our program in GDB and we have our EIP at that position there now, which we can use in a related tool. Let's point the framework. Query. And we have our size of our buffer to control the return address. Let's just copy that into our working directory. We'll write the beginning of our exploit. So buffer equals A times 312. Let's do was buffer. Let's have our prog name equals dav and then we execute our program. Make sure we have the right imports. We use struct later on. And there's the basis of our program. What goes for the rest of the buffer? Okay. So we're going to develop a chain return to libc. So let's firstly start off with turning off ASLR. Okay, great. Now in a classic return to libc, we need to know the address of the system call and the bin sh string. So let's do that. 
So start up GDB. We're going to use the GDB Peter plugin. Set a breakpoint at start. We run. Now, what's the address of system? We've got the address of system there. We also need the address of bin SH, which is our pointer to us pointer to this particular string and the argument to our system call. So we want to make our return address. We want to get code execution and return into our libc system. Now when this system call takes control the system library call believes that it's come from a calling function and that calling function has placed a return address on the stack. So this return address here is what system as a, func as a, as a library call will return to after that call exits, after that function exits. Now on our stack is also our argument to the system call. So there we have a classic return to libc. So let's run our program now. Is always spelling mistakes when you write code. Let's run our code and we've got a shell. Now when we exit from this system library call it will return to this return address here A, B, C, D. So we exit and we get a seg fault. Let's turn on core dumps, run the exploit, exit, got a core dump. Now let's check our core file and we can see that it's returned to A, B, C, D. Okay. So let's chain some library calls together. Okay. So let's start our program. Set a breakpoint and start. Load the plugin. Run. So what what things would we chain it to? Well let's we want to chain it to exit just to make it clean exit cleanly. Let's also uh, chain a printf for demonstration purposes. Uh, and let's also Let's, let's, let's leave that one out for now. Let's leave that one out for now. So, we want, we're going to chain three things together. I'm going to chain system, I'm going to chain a printf, and I'm going to chain an exit. So, what we really want to do 
is make this return address point to the next chains library call. The problem is that this argument to our first library call causes problems. So one thing we can do, sometimes known as ESP lifting, is move the stack pointer past this argument so our new part of the stack is our next library call. Okay, so we write the next part of the Now for this printf we're going to pass it that bin sh string again. Okay. So how do we chain this library call to this library call? We just need to move the stack pointer so that it comes down here. We'll lift ESP. And we can do that. We can do that using a few approaches. One thing we can do is use gadget and that gives us a pop ret. Now pop ret is exactly what we need to move the stack pointer and then return to that return address which is going to be our next library call. We could also use rop search I'm going to do a pop eax ret in libc. There we go. There's our pop eax. Let's do pop eax ret equals struct.pack. Replace this now with our pop eax ret. Let's replace that with pop eax ret. Let's also add our next. Note we can't have any nulls in our in our stack because it's a string copy. Now we've chained three library calls together, a printf, a system, and a printf and an exit. So let's run our exploit. As expected. Now, when we exit, when we exit, we printed that string, and then exited with our return value. So let's. We don't really need the printf. It's just for demonstration purposes. Let's run our exploit again. We exit, and we exit cleanly, but with the negative one as our exit value in the shell truncates that. Okay, so that's our chain return to libc. So let's now finally turn ASLR back on, and we see that our exploit no longer works. Let's turn off core dumps. We'll get a segmentation fault. So let's brute force ASLR and we got a shell in 118 attempts let's let's try it again to see how long it takes to brute force ASLR bit longer this time. And we've got a shell. One more time. And we've got a shell. And there we go. We've We've chained together multiple library calls uh, 
and used an ESP lifting gadget to move the stack pointer. If you had multiple arguments to a library call, you would need to lift the stack pointer higher. So if you had two arguments, a pop, pop, ret would be useful. If you had three arguments, a pop, 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 ret would be what you're after. And that is our chain return to libc. Go to my Patreon page uh, if you want to pledge. Um, otherwise, uh, check out the other videos on YouTube. Uh, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.